Welcome to this week's Talking Cod Swallop. I am Gemma. I am James. I'm not a depends for anybody else. I am James. I am the co-host for this episode and hopefully all forthcoming episodes too. Yes, hopefully. Well, hopefully we'll both be on them. You never know. (laughs) How very true, yes. It's all a bit... As and when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, to be fair, this episode nearly didn't happen because, um, yeah, True. I True. had a few technical issues this week and uh, my laptop completely died and uh, gave me the blue wall of death, which said uh, something along the lines of, uh, you're fucked, basically. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And you sent me pictures, yeah. I did, yeah. And... Um, yeah, thanks to YouTube and my own wonderful capabilities, because I do want to take some credit for it, but uh, I managed to actually fix the problem and my laptop is now perfectly fine and perfectly working. So I was impressed that you did it yourself. I was very impressed. So. Uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed with myself, to be completely honest. So... Even I, I mentioned it to Andy. You know, I was just messaging him, and um, mm-hmm. I, I didn't say about the computer dying because I, I really wanted to try and solve it myself before mm-hmm. I actually um, bothered anyone that I knew that was IT related. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, so he was like, "Oh well, you know, well done," and I was like, "I can read that sarcasm," and he was like, "No, no, genuinely, well done." Mm. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." I was impressed myself. Because I, when I had a similar thing happen, I had to go running to Chase. So. Yeah, <laughs> who's a very much an IT genius. So. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't have had a clue. No. What do you keep clicking, by the way, James? No, nope, I put it away. It's my pen knife. Okay. Well, stop doing that because you were doing yes. that on another episode, <laughs> and I kept hearing it. <laughs> it's like so. It's my weaponry side. <laughs> I know we're coming into October and it's a scary <laughs> month, but you know you shouldn't be flipping a pen knife it's so, while it, recording. It's, so, it's, it, it's not that; it's whittling. Oh. <laughs> Sitting on the porch, whittling wood like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you've been doing? Is it? No, no, I've been. <laughs> no, I've not been whittling. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> So why have you got a pen knife? I think, you know, we had to get into the bottom. Why, now. why do I have a pen knife? Because um, it was a, a few weeks ago, well, not a few weeks ago, about a few days ago, one of my windows completely wouldn't close properly. It was just like the handle had gone. So in, in a, a mode similar to yourself, I was like, how on earth do I fix this? <laughs> uh, YouTube. And yeah. he said, basically, you've got to manage to get a... Uh, the, well, they basically told me how to do it, and I followed the advice of doing it. With a, but, yeah, I had to use my pen knife, and, yeah, it worked. So oh, that's The window good. is, uh, is f- f- fine again. The latch is as it should be. So, yeah, all is secure. Yeah, well, that that is fantastic news, then, in that case. It is. And I just keep it around for, you know, the odd scary stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <you> <laughs> and, and flicking it while you're recording. Yes. You know, because yeah, clearly that say? isn't irritating. Yeah. <laughs> No, not at all, not at all, not at all irritating. A bit like this noise. Will you stop I won't do it? that, I promise. That's a Parker pen, not a pen knife. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it sounded actually really dodgy. Oh, what, you mean like... Yeah, like that. <laughs> this is the one that's going to be the after dark one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's what that sounded like oh right and we're back just in case anybody wondered <laughs> temporarily there and my voice is probably slightly different now um we got all excited and uh mm-hmm. james was making his inappropriate noises yep. i got rather excited about it apparently and uh, had a coughing fit and then a sneezing fit so mm. yes my voice may sound slightly different now. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. My eyes are watering now. I'm in a right state. <laughs> well, <clears throat> these things happen. What can I say? Just so funny. So funny. <laughs> all because you were wanking off with a pen knife. <laughs> <laughs> that could... Hey... Don't knock it. That could be a completely new way of, you know, move over only fans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sort of trim, trim your pubes at the same time sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, the fact that you probably cut your sell, cut your uh, your uh, manhood off in the process, but I'm sure there'd be someone somewhere who'd enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. yeah, definitely. Well, the uh, you know the different stories that we've sort of read in the past with regards to mm. like the weird news section and whatnot. I uh, I definitely can agree that you know I think there are some people out there who would like to watch that. So. The world is a strange, strange place. It is. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> but we never kink shame, do we, James? Nope, nope. We nope. certainly don't. If it, if it works, as long as it's not illegal, that's absolutely fine by us. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So how have you been for the last week or so? Uh, it's been all right. I managed to not. Uh, the, rather annoying this morning, I was out sorting some stuff out, and I dropped my watch on the floor oh. uh, on the the concrete, and it like scratch parts of it. But uh, I managed to actually solve it. I was quite worried. I've managed to buff most of it out myself using uh, metal cleaner and things. So yeah, I'm reasonably oh, happy good. that it hasn't caused any real damage. So uh, other than like I'm to get like my knee x-rayed and stuff because that still caused me problems so i'm awaiting that and the general crappiness of the long covid i'm surviving how are you yeah that's good and what did, just quickly what did the nurse say as well on about, about my knee yeah uh, i have no idea because i'm awaiting the response i went in and they said it'll take about a week or so oh no no so, but uh, sorry uh, what i meant was is that she said something along the lines of you're too young to have knees like oh, this or something. Oh, yeah, sorry. The person, yeah, the the uh, x-ray person was sort of saying basically, yeah, you're too young to be having knee problems, and I couldn't help but agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but hey, shit happens. Yeah. And my mum my mum gave you some random advice as well, didn't she? She said to, yeah. well, she'd found out that, um, fr- oh, God, I need to say Frankenstein myself, but frankincense is really good for joint pains. Mm-hmm. So um, she she was like, oh, yeah, and, and I recommended it to you, and you were just like, yeah, whatever. And I thought, if I get my mum to leave you a voice message, you know, mm-hmm. she she might convince him sort of thing. But no, she goes, put some Frankenstein on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I did ask, why why is she telling me to seek out the help of a doctor who takes dismem- you know, the dismembered portions of corpses to fix yeah. me? Or maybe she's just saying I need to have my knee and leg replaced with that from a dead person. Who knows? But yeah, I'm looking to the old Frankenstein uh, <laughs> treatment as <I've> suggested. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, she didn't really get your joke, and I was like, "Oh no, that's just James. That's just James yes. being funny." Hey, it's she, fine. she gave she gave me the wrong words, and I just ran with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Was, uh, but she does. Yeah, she was being silly. And then mm-hmm. you were being silly back, and she didn't quite understand your sense of humour. So yeah. we didn't we didn't meet in the middle, as they say. <laughs> no, well, I was the middle. I had to explain everything. You explained it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. I have been fine. Um, like I said, I'm good. Good. Je- well, Jem will fix it. <laughs> Don't really want to do that, but you know. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm fixing laptops. Um, what else have I done? Nothing Looked really. Up the doggy. Yeah, um, yeah. Mum and Graham are away this week, so it's actually quite nice and peaceful and quiet in the house. But I've got Mister Socks with me still, and I feel really sorry for him because he must be bored most of the time because I'm like obviously still having to work and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's still nice to have something, but having that extra thing to look after while you're mm-hmm. feeling quite tired anyway is mm-hmm. um, is quite challenging it's yeah it's like i keep thinking oh right must feed mr socks must you know must do this must do that mm-hmm. you know kind of thing i keep forgetting to eat myself and i'm like ah. what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> so it's like before we started recording this i was like oh i better have one of uh nathan nathan page sent me a load of um chocolates in a box and uh, Nathan, if you're listening, I'm running low, you know, just, you know, hint, hint. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but no, I had a couple of those before I uh, started recording, just so that I uh, had some sugar in me before, you know, because otherwise I would have probably been a bit like, <laughs> Nathan and the poison chocolate. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Sounds like a, 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 a Christie story. 
a yeah, that, or it could be a, a um, yes. Well, yeah, let's just go with that. Sorry, because my mm-hmm. brain just died at the same time as yours. So uh, <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> So, this yeah, could be a long know. one. This could be a long one. Tab pulls a very long one, or a <laughs> so very short going, uh, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a five-minute episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, salty tab pulls. <laughs> I hope you've it's been a pleasure. This week. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a story. <laughs> no, I have got a couple of stories this week, so um, I'm very much looking forward to sharing them, especially one of them, which. I have hinted to James about already, but even he doesn't know what it's about because I want it to be a surprise. So, Indeed, I look forward to hearing it. Yes, yes. I like to keep them as a bit of a surprise for even James, so I get a real reaction. And sometimes true. I don't like the real reaction. Sometimes nope, the reaction's true. like, huh. Yeah, and so, yeah, What? what's your point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. God, you're like a, like a teenager, you are. Yeah. Petulant teen. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you just need to take, tell your knees that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, oh, God, yeah. If my teenage self knew about my knee and back prompts, amongst all the other health stuff, he'd be slapping the shit out of me right now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but no, um, I'm stalling, but I'm trying to think what I've done over the last couple of weeks because I haven't really done anything. You can't to be remember, honest. can you? No. <laughs> No, I haven't done anything overly fun. Um, going out on Saturday, so that would have been yesterday, mm-hmm. for podcast-related reasons, to meet up with a couple of friends, which will be nice. And um, I need to find out where we're meeting again, because I've completely forgotten. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so it's obviously they'll let me know. But apparently there's like it's like a little... It's like a restaurant, but it's also mm-hmm. got like a little farm shop as well, where you can buy like cool. little knickknacks, and it's all like weird kind of. Um, it's almost like um, a bit like an indoor car boot kind of in some ways. So it's got like all different things, like it's got furniture, it's got knickknacks, it's got oh, it's got everything. So, but it changes from like week to week. So uh, we're going to have a little wander around there as well and see if there's anything that sort of catches our eye. And um, so what you tell me is it's basically a junk shop. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's on the side of the sort mm-hmm. of restaurant, but I think it all goes to like charity. Oh, so, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Just got a helicopter going across me now. So I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but Maybe not, but... uh, I can't, no, no. No. Oh, we had Search and Rescue. Talking about helicopters, we had Search and Rescue um, flying over our... Well, it's not over our head, but it was kind of on the back of us. We've got this walk, which is called uh, the Robbell Trail, and Mm -hmm. um, it's all paved, but, you know, obviously you can go... Basically, you can walk from mine into town, and it probably just takes, like, half hour... Whereas normally if you were walking the main roadway, it would take like an hour and a half, you know, kind of thing because of like uh, roads and stuff like, you know, like all the twisty roads and whatnot. Anyway, um, and it's a, it's a really nice walk, but at, at night you can't walk it because it's a bit mm-hmm. of a dangerous area at night because mm-hmm. there's a lot of like bushes and stuff and there's mm-hmm. a lot of weird people around. So, but anyway, so at night there was um, a search and rescue that was sort of, flying over it and um we could see like they were obviously searching for someone because uh they kept putting all the lights down and stuff but oh it was quite interesting but it was bloody noisy just hearing it hovering yeah. over the top of your uh, over the top of your house almost you know like it was almost like not at the bottom of the garden it was a bit further than that but you know we could see it clearly that's how close that's it was you know but yeah, the, I think it, we had a helicopter go over here yesterday. Which I think it was another sort of search one. But yeah. the problem that you get is it, certainly around here you have people going out on walks into the hills, and if they get you know in, right into the dales, and if they get in mischief, uh, you know, and fall or whatever, it's they do need to be airlifted because there's pretty much no other way out of it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of it's mm. very similar to sort of us in a way. You know, like, because mm-hmm. we've got the sea and the rocks and stuff like that. So instead of it being, um, 
yeah, instead of it being like the Dales, the, the Yorkshire yeah. Dales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm not exactly sure what accent that was, but yeah, you are right. It is the Yorkshire Dales. <laughs> the Yorkshire Dales. I don't know. I think it was, yeah, it was my f- attempt of saying Yorkshire yes. Dales. <laughs> don't worry, she's not had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your Dorset accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I don't do the Dorset accent. <laughs> well, no, I know. You've tried before, though, haven't you? And it's, yeah, uh... I can't remember. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Yeah. I honestly can't remember. Yeah, I think some sort of tadpoles that sometimes James chooses not to remember things. Yeah, a bit like when you're uh, out drinking and you, you know, you choose not to remember what happened the night before because it's absolutely mortifying. I think sometimes, yeah, harsh. James does so that. Har- she's so harsh to me. Such a harsh woman. <laughs> I know, I know, but we we can't change me. So what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck with me now, James. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nearly four years, you know. Yeah, l- unless, you, unless you have like some sort of, unless either of us have some mysterious accident in, you know, in air quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I hope neither of us does in yeah. air quotes. J- just to say, you know, definitely I don't want that to happen in case anything does happen and <laughs> yes. get a visit from the police. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because I will be releasing the episode before it happens. <laughs> so mm-hmm. That's what you think. I mean, no, anyway, yes, of course. <laughs> well, I've got people in the background that can do it for me. Looking at mm. you, Jamie Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust James to do it. I'll just get somebody no. outside of the podcast to do yeah. it. <laughs> Just when I pay Jamie off and I'm going, yeah, you know, come on, son, don't uh, <laughs> don't release. <laughs> <laughs> i let you into a little secret, though, James, but shh, mm-hmm. don't tell anyone. Okay. I think that Jamie actually prefers me over you. I can understand that. I prefer you over me, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, I can't really agree with that. I can't agree that I actually prefer myself over you, but there we are. There we are. <laughs> I guess someone's got to like you. Well, somebody somewhere must do, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. So, have you been listening to any podcasts recently, James, or maybe watching any? YouTube videos recently. No, no James. I've not been listening. No, no, I've not listened to any podcasts uh, apart from the the usual stuff like Tell Me Steve, Dave, and other things. But I did watch a really interesting podcast. Oh, really? Kind of makes you wonder. It's a, it well, it, it's a podcast, a podcast, or is it a vodcast? It's a hard one to work out. But yeah, I saw a brilliant one. Uh, it was uh, the the raising money. Uh, it was the Squee Fest, I think it was called. It was the fourth iteration of it yeah um, and it was raising money for shelter and it had this really really great segment on uh with uh this guy called eddie pence and okay. i can't remember who the other person was uh oh yeah it was it was the wonderful you doing uh <laughs> talking cod swallop which i should have been on but i wasn't well enough to do no you weren't and i did send your apologies you did, so. you did. and i did um, wait until you know literally probably five minutes before the end to say that you were working at the glory holes <laughs> indeed yeah very good <clears throat> but no yeah. it was, i really enjoyed it. it was a nice little thing to watch and it was interesting to see uh, I kept laughing about the idea of, you know, can we swear, can we not swear? <laughs> it's after nine o'clock. And the little blurbs that are coming up from people at the bottom asking various questions. <laughs> yeah, and the one when Owen sent, and it was so big that actually you couldn't really see Eddie's face and he was just peering <laughs> over it. It was just so funny. <laughs> it was very good, very good. It's a shame I wasn't able to be a part of it, but it was yeah. nice to be able to view it later on uh, as a as a tadpole. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and um, obviously it was a massive fun doing that as mm-hmm. well. And, um, of course, massive thanks to uh, Dr Squee for having us on. Well, me. Mm-hmm on because james mm-hmm. again he couldn't be asked to be there i mean shocking let's let's face he, it it he, wasn't that he was ill he was attending to the glory holes and uh apparently i now work there so um and unfortunately <laughs> that came from my own mind <laughs> so. mm. <laughs> but you got eduardo so it's all good yeah absolutely it's actually edwin but yeah 
Oh, right. I stand corrected. Yeah, his uh, yeah his actual birth name is Edwin Pence rather than um, Edward. But uh, yes, but it's still Eddie, 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 oi, oi, oi. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so was I, I, I was unsure how we'd react to that as an introduction. Yeah, okay. I think, yeah, I, I don't think he really got it, but, you know, maybe no. you did, maybe you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it struck me as rather a British thing, so... Yeah. yeah, I think it's either a British thing or an Australian thing, isn't it? Or a mixture Possibly, of the two. Yeah. Maybe a bit of both. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah, and we've also got an apology to make as well. Well, in a sense, it's uh, it was a mixed issue uh, mixed error unfortunately but we were supposed to be guesting on a um another podcast called fellowship of the geeks podcast where um a big group of us i think was originally like eight of us so there was quite a lot of us yeah and we were all going to be reviewing a film called oh my goodness what was it called the night of the scarecrow was it I think that was, yeah. I think that was it, yeah. yeah. But um, unfortunately, over because they're an American podcast, over in America, the clocks changed. So we ah. were we were ready at four o'clock, weren't we? And uh, we were. It was a range that was four <laughs> o'clock our time. But actually, it was five o'clock our time because obviously their clocks had changed, and uh, we'd already got something sort of booked in for after, so we couldn't actually mm-hmm. do the. Uh, recording with them sadly so but I wanted to just give them a little you know a little apology shout out kind of thing and if it helps after you know after we did uh, well after we sort of logged off and whatnot my computer died so we didn't get to do the uh, interview that we were going to do anyway because my computer died so you know actually maybe that's karma maybe we should have just stayed logged on and actually done the recording in the first place (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. It was so it was a very weird experience because we were sat trying to work out why there was no one there and the clock was ticking for us. Yeah. Uh and basically yeah, the 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 brown stuff hit the fan. Yeah. Basically. It the, did. <laughs> the long sense. Yeah. But you know, we'll definitely be on the um podcast one day and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later. But yep. um <clears throat> I mean, did you want to do a mini review of the film? It was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> My words are, it was shit. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's oh, all I can do is sigh thinking about it because yeah. it just felt like it was like it was. I think mid nineties, wasn't it? And it was like yeah, it was very. It's horror. It was horror. But, you know, it's bringing somebody in who's not been in town for a while and meeting people they've known in the past and. It was like every bloody cliche you could imagine. And um, the special effects were not really up to snuff. Well, they weren't. They weren't special. (laughs) No. It kind of felt, if I'm honest, like it it was... If you watched it um, and you saw it as a comedy, a horror comedy, it would be passable. But it's like it couldn't even mock itself properly. It was... yeah. And it's nice to see uh, Bruce Glover, uh, Crispin Glover's dad, um, who was playing a priest in it. But, yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't be high on my list of things to watch again. But it's like most things, it's experience. It, it's not as foul as Catwoman, but it was... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, It certainly, yeah, it wasn't... Um, I mean, you know, obviously the guys will be releasing their episode about it, so I'm sure that they probably had the same sort of thoughts as we did, but I almost, you know, like, if we had been there, I almost wished that somebody really loved it so that I could sort of go, what film were you watching? Counter-argument. Yeah, <laughs> counter-argument. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was kind of like there was a bit where this scarecrow's, um, there's this girl on in a car, in a, well, in a van because she wants to go somewhere really um, romantic and private. And she goes, in, her and her boyfriend go into a van to have sex. Yeah, because that's romantic <laughs> and private. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> and then, um, yeah, the scarecrow thing that's come to life. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he's taking control. But when he put when his finger comes out of the straw, it's like, oh my god, that looks like a penis. <laughs> I don't remember that bit so well, but yeah, it was just like it was. 
<laughs> certain things. Like the, I mean, for me, like the flashback scene. Uh, you know, when you're going, when they're going back in time, it was just shot crappily. Yeah. It's like you're watching it on someone's camcorder. Yeah. Oh, no. God. No. <laughs> no, we we don't recommend this film. No, we don't. I mean, <laughs> if you if you want to lose hours of your life, then you know, watch it. But no, to be honest, yeah, we don't recommend that film. But um, I, I, the only thing that I really did like at the end was the explosion, and I think all of the budget went on that. Hmm. What I would say is I'd recommend it if you feel you need to punish yourself for something. <laughs> Maybe if you feel you've done something wrong or you've upset a family member. And you feel you you need to, you know, you need to, to, to make yourself uh, feel bad. Yeah. Or technically, maybe you could watch it and feel better about yourself. You're like, well, I didn't make this piece of, you know, uh, foul garbage. So I don't know, yeah. you know. Yeah. A bit of a, uh, a bit of a tough one. Yeah, and I'm I'm interested to find out as well in America if it's normal for a family to have a mayor, a um, police chief or whatever he was, and a uh, priest in all in the same family. It wouldn't surprise me in a small sort of town like that. I did also, who was, oh God, what's he called? The guy who played the police officer. He's quite a well-known actor now. Um, oh, is he? I sh- yeah, I assume he must have a uh, well-known comedian. I assume he must Stephen Root. I assume he must have like had uh, an extra increase in the the requirement of his car insurance or something that month, and he decided <laughs> that he needed to go, and, you know, just get a bit of money quickly without having to do much. So yeah, because I love him. He's in um, he's in quite a few. He was in things like Dodgeball, but he was also in uh, Barry, the series Barry, okay. playing a uh, like a uh, the Barry's boss. But he's very good. I like him. He's a good actor. Ah, okay. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, my first experience of him, I disagree, but, you know. <laughs> you've got it. You've seen him in a bad thing. He's actually good. So, as I said, he must have been like, hmm, insurance due. What can I do quickly that's going to raise me some money? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, as we're talking about things that uh, we have recently watched, have you watched anything that mm-hmm. was good? <laughs> Um, I watched Dartmoor. I'm not sure if I'd yeah. use the word good. Um, <laughs> you know, it was good, but it's not the word you wouldn't use is pleasant. Yeah, I'm it's halfway. Certainly... Yeah, I'm halfway through that at the moment. I've just finished episode seven. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the story of it's that. very interesting, though, isn't it? It really is interesting. Yeah, um, but it's not nice. No, it it's not nice. I'm really battling, you know, some ways I was battling with it in the first few episodes because, mm-hmm. firstly, I love Evan Peters. So mm-hmm. the fact that Evan Peters has been cast to, you know, to play the role, I, mm-hmm. it's really hard for me not to go, oh, he's, he's so handsome. Because, you know, it, it's uh, it's Jeffrey Dahmer, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, or Dahmer, D- you know, how say however you say his last name. Yeah. Uh, doesn't really matter. He's a serial killer and he's dead. So it doesn't really matter how we say his name. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, so that was quite hard to sort of get over initially. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then I started feeling sorry for him with his upbringing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but then I'm like arguing with myself mentally going, why are you upset? Yeah, Why are you feeling sorry for a serial killer? And no, it's just but, getting but worse. But you are right. Yeah. You are right, because I was talking to my father about this. Uh, we were discussing like other people, you know, the murderous things. And it's, you do feel an element of, you do feel, it's not forgiving them for the terrible things they've done. But yeah. it's when you see a lot of the reasons why people end up the way they are, you, yeah. have, you can understand an element of sympathy. Um because they are very screwed up people. It's uh, and it's yeah. also this interesting thing I was talking to my dad about, and he, through his previous career, you know, knows a lot more about this sort of stuff than uh, I would and many would. But it's always this interesting thing that a lot of murderers seem to think they're like the smartest people in the room, but they never are. Yeah. <laughs> it seems. <laughs> Because I watch a lot of true crime stuff, and there's like you see yeah. murderers, and they think they're a genius. And I'm like, they're a dumbass. <laughs> they yeah. the most obvious things that mean they get caught. So, well, yeah, I mean, also the fact that they've been caught means that they're a dumbass. So mm-hmm. you know, they're clearly not great. But you know, it's obviously mm-hmm. a real a representation of how badly the police yeah were was, in investigating yeah. and yeah. yeah. 
And um, I know there's been a lot of complaints with regards to, you know, like from the LGBTQ plus plus, I think it is, um, the, you know, from their point of view, you know, it, there's been a few complaints because it was actually um, it was actually put up on Netflix as, you know, like an ideal film for somebody who's like gay or lesbian and to watch or whatever. Um, sorry, not a film, it's a TV program. But um, and also, you know, like there's the sort of underlying racial side of things, which mm-hmm. technically might have been embellished on a little bit because I think it was more the fact that, um, you know, like Jeffrey, uh, Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> yeah, like with first name terms. Yeah. Je- <laughs> oh, I don't really want to be on first name terms with him. But um, yeah, like. I think that, you know, it was more the fact that he was poor and he couldn't afford to move anywhere rather than him picking specifically mm. that area to live in because, yeah, he uh, he wanted to target sort of the black people and uh, ethnic, you know. But I again, like I said, I think that's possibly a little bit of a Netflix twist on things to make it a little bit more of a story but um, I mean I could be wrong there as well I don't know the ins and outs completely but Mm -hmm. um, but I am enjoying it I did after episode no not seven episode six I was Mm -hmm. uh, I was at one point screaming at my TV to the deaf blunt uh, deaf dumb guy um, mm-hmm. He was actually dumb in the sense that he couldn't speak. He wasn't dumb as in, <laughs> um, and I was going, no, don't go with it. <laughs> yeah. It and, was, uh, <clears throat> yeah. I got quite emotional with that one because I was like, no, because he's like, he's, he's such a nice guy, you know, but yeah. Mm. yeah but it's this interesting thing. If you see it with, you saw it with Dharma, <sighs> And he said that you also saw it with, oh, God, what was he called? Um, more with, oh, God, uh, he, uh, yeah, you'll see it with, with serial killers, maybe with Dharma to a degree, but other people where they, they, I mean, it's that thing of they don't come across as desperately threatening. Um, yeah. Which is obviously what helps in what they're doing. And I, I, well, I can remember the name of the other guy who was a serial killer. Do you killer. mean Ted Bundy? Yes, I think it is Ted Bundy, isn't it? Yeah, because he was quite um, a good-looking man, wasn't he? Yes, it is Ted Bundy, yeah. So he was quite... I mean, he was a bit different to Dharma because Dharma was not what you call a very social person. But if you look at somebody like Ted Bundy, he was handsome, he was good with people socially, so you can see how he attracted people, you know, and managed to kill them. And it's it's just interesting elements of this. But, yeah, very, uh, yeah, interesting and worrying at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because you do tend to find that mm-hmm. um, it's, it, you know, I know that sounds awful, doesn't it? But it's like the dodgy looking people are necess- mm-hmm. aren't necessarily the ones that are actually going to kill you. It's the, you know, often it's like the well, the people that you wouldn't suspect. You the know. invariable thing with criminals and murderers is people always want to go with the stereotype. And there yeah. is no stereotype, you know, a because they ask you, well, what does a murderer look like? Well, uh, what does a murderer look like? You know? Yeah. <laughs> what does a, a sex offender look like? Well, can't answer the question, because yeah. across the board, you're never going to... You know, I've been around various people in past career stuff who are, who are reformed criminals, and I know the background, but you wouldn't be able to say straight away, well, that person's done this, that, and that, this person's done that, and whatever. It's, yeah, it's shockingly surprising how normal people will look. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And also, you know, like there's certain certain crimes, of course, that people do or whatever. And, mm-hmm. you know, if they've redeemed themselves, then, you know, it should be, uh, it should be fine to, you know, should be able to move on from them as well. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yeah. Next offenders, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So, but, uh, I mean, I'd love to get into this a little bit more, but uh, I just don't want to spoil it for anybody. No for anybody who hasn't watched it yet or is in the middle of watching it or whatever. But um I I did I did finish all a big mouth. Um, you know, that was good. <laughs> I I know you can't wait to watch it, so uh that's why I'm bringing it up again. Um 
Yeah, that was that cartoon. Are you remembering about it or not? Because you've gone completely blank. So, no, I'm literally searching my mind. <laughs> what yeah, exactly. it is. I, I can almost mouth? hear. What? I can the hear the cogs turning. turning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, because this is the um, it's the cartoon on Netflix that was um, for teenage. Uh, you know, basically, it's a group of teenagers that had um, uh, they were going through, pu- uh, through puberty, basically. I found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've uh, I finished watching all of those. All five uh, series are now finished. Um, so mm-hmm. I I think it's brilliant. I just think it's hilarious, and it. I mean, it's absolutely stupid. Don't get me wrong; mm-hmm. it's utterly stupid at times. Um, but I think if anybody likes like Rick and Morty kind of thing, that kind of sense of humour, then I think that this would be uh, quite a good recommendation for you to watch. Um, I will have a look. Yeah. <laughs> I also I also started watching the new Quantum Leap. Um, hmm. I'm on the fence yeah. with that. I haven't started it yet. Hmm. <sighs> Interesting. It's okay. Yeah, but it. Uh, all I'm, I'd like you. You know, I don't want to give anything away, but I'll be interested to see how long it lasts. That's all I'll say. So. Yeah, because I thought that. Um, ba- uh, I can remember his surname, Bacula. Sc- um, Scott Bacula. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Scott Bacula was supposed to have something involved in it, but I understand that he's not been included in it at all. Well, he said he hasn't. I mean, you never know, he may reappear. There's been other people who said they're not going to be part of things and then rejoin them and reappear, which we can discuss. Uh, I don't know if Jim will have a clue what I'm alluding to, but we'll be discussing something to do with that uh, shortly, I'm sure. But um, he may or may not. But he is, again, don't want to give too much away, but there are references to, uh, well, I'm not giving much away, there are references to previous characters and whatnot in it. So, yeah. We shall see. Okay. All right. Well, because it's just a shame because I know it's like a continuation rather than like a reboot type mm-hmm. thing, isn't it? So that that is a good mm-hmm. thing in itself. Um, it but, is. But the fact that, you know, like you've still got um, Scott Bakula is still alive. I am saying his surname right, am I? Yeah, Bakula, yeah. Bakula, yeah. Scott Bakula. yeah. Um, so he could easily, you know, because it, it was like the case that he was still traveling through time when it finished. He was still leaping, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he could still be leaping, but just as an older person, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, but, you know. So I guess they, you know, they they went the route that they're going to go. But, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's not worth getting the new no. audience. Sometimes it's continuing pleasing the old, um, the old audience. It is, opinion. and it's very tricky. You know, you're right, and it's tricky because if you think about, and we're, I know we're segueing to celluloid cods, well, <laughs> tadpoles, bear with us. Um, but it's, it, I was discussing with somebody the um, the X Files. Yeah. So we had the original one of the X Files. Uh, within that, there was the film, and then quite a long time after, there was the second film, which was not as successful. Um, but they were lucky enough that they managed to then bring back that limited series and it worked. So I don't know. I can't work out with Quantum Leap if it's going to be a limited series run of a few episodes and that'll be it. It'll be self-contained or if it's successful, they'll keep going with it. But lap of the gods, we shall see. I never thought the Magnum reboot would be very good, but I liked it and it worked well. So who knows? Let's let's hope it uh, it, it does okay. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've just, I'm not really interested in watching it at the moment. Um, mm-hmm. Same, same as She Hulk. I mean, I will get around to watching probably both of them, but I'm uh, not She Hulk. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about it. You can talk about it to your heart's content because it's not going to spoil anything. So, if you want to talk about anything, carry on. Uh, it's okay. It's yeah. It's not yeah. Uh, put your brain in neutral and watch it sort of thing it's it's yeah i'm not invested enough you know it's not my bag i'm not invested in it enough so i can't get like mental over it like some people are but yeah it's okay it's watchable yeah it's CGI a shame is shite though <laughs> <So> <laughs> it's I'm a sorry. shame though it really is <laughs> it's a shame though because the actress who's playing she hulk and can't remember her name tatiana <laughs> something um she was in a program called Orphan Black, which 
I highly recommend. If you can find it anywhere, you need to watch it. I mean, obviously, you've got to pay for it. Don't bother. But, you know, if you can find it on a screen a streaming site for free, watch it. That is absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, with regards to that program, um, she literally... Uh, well, I mean, there's a couple of extras, but she literally plays every single character. Wow. And... They are all clones of each other, but they're all like, they've all grown up in different locations. And there's like one male version, which he even plays like the male version as well. There's one that's a Russian, you know, it's, it's, it's just such an amazing program. And um, you've got all these, all these um, different characters and you, you kind of, in some ways, as you're watching it, you kind of separate yourself and mm-hmm. you don't you almost forget that you're actually watching the same actress actually performing because they're so different in some ways. But yeah, she is very, very talented. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not, it's nothing against her. I think she's doing the best with what she, she's been given, but it's, it's, I don't know. There are elements of it that I found that I really enjoyed and made me laugh, but there are other elements of it. that are just like, is this really it? But Hey, yeah. Can't please all the people all the time. No, no, absolutely you can't. So yeah, unfortunately that's the case. So, um, but speaking of Marvel, yes, I think we have something has happened that will probably please a lot of the people. Oh yes, all the time, possibly even all the people, because I had no idea. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? This was yesterday. I'm like, well, oh, Deadpool thing. Okay, interesting. You know, a little video teaser thing goes mm-hmm. on. Have you seen this yet, Gemma? I haven't actually physically seen it, but I know exactly what's happened because I've heard the audio from another podcast that uh, I listened to. And also I got a message from Lucy yesterday informing me of what's going on. But <laughs> I haven't actually physically seen the video Part, but, but it was, yes, it was, I, I'm, it was a yeah, go on. Sorry, go, no, I was just saying it's a very good video. It's Ryan Reynolds, you know, contemplating all the things you know to do with he was apologizing for not being at the D3 Expo and he was saying, you know, we've been working hard to you know for a long time to bring the new Deadpool film together and it sh- shows him like working out and he's saying it, he's got everyone's got a every film's got to stand alone and be great and he's you know pondering walking through a forest and then as I said, you see him. Uh, lifting weights and then he's you know uh pouring very good sponsorship pouring aviator gin into <laughs> <laughs> into a dead mug and then he's saying you know we're working out what we need to do and he, he seems sat in the toilet reading a dead pool comic <laughs> 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 and he's going and uh, uh, uh we got nothing uh <laughs> taps his head he goes like apart from you know fair he goes however we did have one idea and across the background, he's sat himself across the background, you see uh, Hugh Jackman walk past eating something. And he's going, uh, say, Hugh, do you want to play Wolverine for one more time? <laughs> he just goes, yeah, right, sort of thing like, sure, why not, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be phenomenal, honestly. Yeah. Watching those two, because they're such good friends in real life, aren't they? Yeah. And obviously yeah. that Twitter war that they have is absolutely amazing i just i can't get enough of their twitter wars you know kind of thing um i don't know if they do it on any other social media but i've only ever seen it on there so but yeah i think it, we we do have a little bit of a wait for it unfortunately mm. but i oh, think it's... it will definitely be worth it uh, uh well it, the, the also i mean the fact he was saying is that the big push is that it's going to be the first Deadpool in the Marvel Universe. Yes. So, yeah, and I can kind of see how it works because it's not going to be Wolverine, as in Wolverine from the previous things, I suspect. it Maybe it'll be a slightly different iteration. So, yeah, I should also assume they must have thrown a hell of a lot of money at <laughs> you German to, to play the part again. So, yeah, I think it'll be very interesting. And it's going to be an 18, I hope, so. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. I hope so, too. Um, yeah, because I, th- I was thinking that they, they have already sort of, in some ways, they've already put him with other Marvel characters mm-hmm. as well in the, you know, mm-hmm. like, but they're the the smaller ones, the, aren't they? Sort of it, like yeah, Colossus. It was, Is it Colossus? Yeah, yeah. 
It is Colossus, yeah. yeah. It was it was the way they did it. I mean, it's it all gets complex, doesn't it? It's all like different multiverse universes, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah. Mm. I don't know. But no, I'd look forward to seeing it and I do like the fact that yeah, I think it could be very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, I do too. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun as well. I think that's the most important thing. Let's see if he says cod swallop again. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah, yeah, true. God, you know, two two brilliant, uh, crazy Canadian things sort of rolled into one. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll what, see. What do you mean? Sorry. Well, Wolverine's character's Canadian. Oh, okay. Uh, and isn't Ryan Reynolds Canadian? He is Canadian, yes, yeah, but yeah. I was trying to work out what you were saying because I knew yeah, that yeah. Hugh... Um, What's his face? He's an Aussie. He's an Aussie, an yeah. Aussie. <laughs> Hugh What's his face? <laughs> One of the biggest celebrities in the world, and I just called him Hugh What's his face. <laughs> that, yeah. See, he, you're not that big. She no. doesn't know who you are or where you're from. <laughs> and again, I'm on first name basis, is but then. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, do you know what we haven't done this week? Go on. Have you got any cod swallop? The watch, maybe. Dropping my watch. That's quite a cod swallop. Oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I was going to say, I suppose in a way, we've done our cod swallops without we have. haven't made it a segment without this week, haven't it. we? Yeah. <laughs> it's naturally bled into the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you managed to solve your watch. So that's yes. good. Yes. Yeah. That's good. No real damage. So, yeah, that's a positive. No. And breaking my laptop, that's probably my cod swallop. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we fixed both things that were a bit buggered. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, there you go. We we can actually confirm that we are actually geniuses. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case then, James, I don't know about you, but mm. should we move on to some stories of the week? Yes. Yeah? I definitely concur and agree, or whatever I'm trying to say, yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're trying to say. So if I read one of my stories first, and then you go, mm-hmm. and then I'll end with my last story, which I've saved Sounds the best good to last. Me. Yeah. Yep, sounds good to me. Okay, so this first one is from the Metro. So, um, sorry. Uh, This one is a gathering of 372 Nigels eases the fear of mass Nigel extinction. Because obviously the name's not that popular. Mm -hmm. Um, Nigels from across the world have gathered at a Worcestershire pub to celebrate their shared Nigelness. Pub landlord Nigel Smith, who runs the Fleece Inn, has made it his life goal to boost the popularity of his name. In doing so, he's created a designated, a, a dedicated, sorry, de- designated, dedicated <laughs> Nigel Fest, which attracts hundreds to toast to all things Nigel. So this is quite a nice story. I mean, it's a bit weird as well, Mm. because there is literally like, well, actually, strangely enough, I'm just looking at the picture. There's actually a woman in there as well, so a couple of women. So I'm not quite sure how they are called Nigel. So I guess they're just the partners of Nigel. (laughs) Um, Nigelina. (laughs) Nigelina, yeah, could be, yeah. Nigella. Nigella, Nigella. yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Nigella. Yeah. Nigella. I think you know what you said it literally the time the the moment that it popped into my head as well, which is actually really spooky. Like you Great know, like mind. almost I heard it a couple of seconds before you said it. Um, Ooh, spooky! Yeah, exactly. So we're on the same page. So there you go. Mister Smith came up with the idea after re- uh, realizing his name had become officially extinct, according to new birth records in two thousand sixteen to 2020 um last night nige fest brought together hundreds of nigels all over the world together for a pint in keeping with the theme the entertainment was provided by musicians called nigel the attendees brought photo ids and signed the book of nigel kept at the pub the festival broke the world record of the largest gathering of Nigels. I mean, how many times are we actually going to say Nigel? I feel like I've said it so many times. Um, 432 joined him for a pint in 2019. So this time 
it was just a recap. Oh, okay. This time it was three hundred and seventy-two. Um, That's pretty impressive. It it is, but oh, the festival break the world. Okay, so they're saying that in two thousand nineteen, the um the amount of people that turned up was four hundred and thirty-two. Because that's what I was thinking. Well, how can it have broken the world record if it's gone down in numbers? But it's they obviously meant in two thousand nineteen it did. Um. It was hoped the wec- the record could be broken again last night, but a slightly more humble grand total of seven hundred and um, sorry three hundred and seventy two passed through the fleece in. So they were just shy of a couple of Nigels. Bless them. Uh, <laughs> the oldest Nigel in attendance was eighty four years old, who came from America for the event, and the youngest Nigel was in his thirties. Others travelled from Los Angeles, Florida, Texas, uh, Zam- Zambini. Zambini, that's not right, is it? Zambi, Biwi, Spain, <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> you know, it's like there's loads of different places basically it came from. <laughs> um, the second ever Nigel Knight raised over £3,000 for British Heart Foundation. Mr. Smith plans to host it again in 2025. So it's for a good cause. That's positive. That's very positive. It is very positive, yeah. And he said, it was absolutely brilliant. We had a fantastic time. It was like we'd all known each other forever, but obviously we didn't. It was a great feeling of all of us getting together and celebrating our Nigelness. Times are pretty difficult at the moment for many of us, so it was great to be able to get together for a party. We just had a jolly fine time. Good. Tradition That's is, what we like to hear. Yeah, exactly. Tradition is something you do twice. That's the rule. We th- sh- uh, Tradition is something that you do twice. That is the rule. We should do it again. I think we've encouraged enough to say every two to three years, we'll do it again, definitely. So in two to three years, James, I think you should change your name <laughs> and become <laughs> Nigel Stafford. Right. And, um, okay. and attend. And attend. And then report back report. what it's like. What do you reckon? Uh, I'll, I'll consider it. I'm not promising anything. I'm not quite sure how well it'd go down, but uh, I'll have a think. <laughs> uh, there was also, just to let you know as well, they also had a 14-week-old puppy called Nigel as well. Oh. Uh, and he was there, but he didn't oh. say very much. Apart so from that's how it ends. <laughs> creepy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right so that's that's kind of the tail end of that story but i really like mm-hmm. that story so um i thought that's that, a nice story yeah i thought yes everyone called nigel getting together to enjoy life mm-hmm. here's my story <laughs> oh, okay oh, right so you'll find why i'm sighing in a minute a okay. sexy singer is to marry a ghost Mm. But he's a prude who steals her knickers. Singer Bracado okay. from Oxfordshire claims she has sexual encounters with her ghost boyfriend, Eduardo, and they are now set to be married at a chapel in Las Vegas. A singer who says she's marrying a ghost has revealed there's a jealous streak and has hidden her sexy outfits. Bracado, who is planning a Halloween wedding, with the spirit of a Victorian soldier called Eduardo, has noticed that skimpy clothing and lingerie has disappeared from her wardrobe. <laughs> the 38-year-old, who shot ITVs this morning, cue jumpers, sorry, uh, viewing by announcing their, mar- <laughs> their marriage, <laughs> believes her ghost boyfriend disapproves of her showing too much skin. The green-eyed ghoul also caught causes her to smudge her makeup and lipstick when she was getting ready for a night out with the girls. <gasps> he died in the Victorian age, she's saying, when someone, when women behave differently, which explains why some of my dresses that look like lingerie have vanished, she says. <laughs> All of my revealing clothes have gone missing. It is basically anything that shows a bit too much flesh. 
Women weren't quite as independent in his time, so he has a different perspective on night out with friends. I think he's quite jealous, Bricard. From Oxfordshire, says Eduardo made his move during a stormy night in the pandemic, and the romantic encounters are mind-blowing. Eduardo has this thing where he kind of takes over my body. It's like a very erotic dream, but you're awake, she says. Instead of having the vision in your mind, you're feeling it throughout your body. It's an earth-shattering kind of sexual encounter. I wish you could the see my face came, right now. <laughs> yeah, the night he came to me, I just felt this spirit take over my body, and I was pulsating on the bed. It catapulted me upright and wouldn't let me turn on the light. He forced my head forward. It was the oddest thing I've experienced. Ooh. Ricard, whose songs have won admiration from rock stars, says Eduardo's presence is not consistent and she cannot predict when he will turn up, but she's convinced he will materialise for the wedding ceremony in Las Vegas. It is not norm, uh, not a normal relationship, and my friends have virtually disowned me, she adds, but I'm intrigued by what is happening. I'm not on a mission to make everyone believe in the paranormal. A few years ago, I would have thought this was madness too. She's uncertain how the marriage will end in, in divorce or exorcism if the human spirit partnership does not work out. Yeah, shoot me now. Um, yeah, I mean, don't oh shoot, her, shoot her, though, because she'll be no. um, permanently left with this guy. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, oh God! I mean, this is just this is just a little bit of the crazy going on here. Yeah, I think, it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's 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 worrying. Is to put it mildly. I mean, the fact they allowed her on television to discuss this stuff is worrying. I'm looking at a picture of her, and she's a yeah, she's an interesting looking woman. She dresses like a goth, uh, okay. kind of, but mixed with like I don't know. I. Uh, <laughs> the world is a strange, strange place. It's like that comment of, you know, uh, I think, what's he said, a friend of disowned it. I wonder why. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're mental. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, you know, going back to our serial serial killer conversation. Yeah. Um, mm. But I know, I think, I mean, each to their own, if every, you know, if you want to marry a roller coaster or whatever, but yeah, at the same time, I, I don't, I don't really believe this story. Yeah, as myself. long as she's not hurting anyone, but I suspect it's all just nonsense and she wants her five minutes of fame. Yeah. But the thing is she's hurting herself in a way though, isn't she? So it is that she is hurting someone. She's hurting mm. herself, which is kind of, I think in some ways it's sadder, isn't it? Because it's just like, oh, but yeah. yeah. I know we're supposed to laugh at these stories, but yeah, my face the whole time was a bit of a grimace, like a, oh, what's going on? She's crackers, <laughs> is the answer. Get help, lady. Get help. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, you know, try to find a real boy rather than a ghost. Um, yeah. I think that might be a little bit better for you, you yeah. know. Imagine the poor real boy, though. You want to, you, 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 sorry, you were going out with what? You were married to what? To who? <laughs> and it's like, we need to stop now, you know, like with regards to, I mean, obviously it's Vegas, so anything kind of goes in Vegas, but I think we need to get to the stage where we need to stop um, ridiculous marriages. Yeah, the crazy, yeah. Yeah, because there's Step no back reason. from it. Yeah, there's no reason we can't just say to that woman who wanted to marry a cat last week, or a couple, not last week, but a couple of weeks back, you know. And it, I mean, cats are cute as hell, don't get me wrong. Dogs are cute mm. as hell. I love my dog, but I don't want to marry him. He's a pain in the yeah. ass at times as well. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, it, I mean, so are men. <laughs> but... <And> but <laughs> But it is amazing that basically society now seems to be normalising the yeah. completely effed up people. Yeah. People who have serious mental health problems. Yeah. Like the guy that you see these people who self-mutilate, you know, they want to like chop the legs off and chop and they chop fingers off and things. This yeah. isn't normal behaviour. This is not healthy. You Just like you said, these people are damaging them. I mean, there's the yeah. positive thing that they're not hurting other people. But it, this, you know, the, the guy who cut off his nose and his ears and he's dyed his eyes and he's had horns implanted. It's worrying. It's very worrying. Yeah. But what, try and break the madness. What's your story? 
<laughs> yeah, I know. It, oh, but it's true. It's true what you're saying. But at the same time, you know, it's like you just. I suppose we just have to let people live their life however they want to live it. So, but yeah. Unfortunately, that does mean that we're going to have an opinion about it as well. Not just mm-hmm. me and you, but in general, mm-hmm. people are going to have in an general, opinion, yeah. aren't they? So, yeah. but yeah. Anyway, let's move on to my story because my story is going to be hopefully bringing the laughter. Okay. I would hope so. Yeah. So I've only given James one a one tiny clue, which was mm-hmm. it's an utter, utterly ridiculous story. Mm-hmm. So, and that's the headline is. Utterly ridiculous, firefighters spend three hours removing a cow stuck in a tree. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say this is a moving on sort of story. How does a cow, pray tell, get stuck in a tree? (laughs) I I do not feel bovines the most, you know, deck. Sterus of animals, so I don't know, but um, you were almost doing the how now, brown cow, brown cow, but yep. you were like, How does a cow yeah. get stuck <laughs> in a tree? <laughs> I am in tree, tell me more. Okay, I mean, we, we might not find out how he actually did it because mm-hmm. the interview isn't the cow. Interview, so yeah. <laughs> he did try to say move over so that I can tell the story myself, but nobody could understand it. Um, the unfortunate animal had to be rescued by firefighters after it got stuck in a tree in Hampshire. Oh, god, it's getting closer to me as well now. The cow, I'm nothing. Could- yeah, exactly. The cow couldn't remove itself, and they do keep putting moo um, from its predicament and looked a little bit moody. <laughs> Is this a metro article? <laughs> no, this one, sorry, because there's pictures. So um, this one is actually from Sky News. Ah. Uh, so basically, you've got like a, <laughs> you've got, a, <laughs> this might be a visual thing that's actually a little bit more funnier than the story but the sto- the picture is quite funny so basically what's happened is is that you know you get some so you know sometimes when you get a tree and it sort of branches off but then like kind of joins together so it's like almost like a hole mm-hmm. in the tree mm-hmm. so yes so the cow has stuck its head through the hole um, oh. oh, <laughs> poor cow oh a cow was removed from a... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more like a ghost. Do, I was going to say, it does sound spooky. <laughs> from a tree by firefighters after the animal got stuck in a tight spot. A crew of Hampshire and Isle of Wight Fire and Rescue joked the incident was utterly ridiculous after they spent over an hour trying to free the cow. The animal's head had got stuck in the tree on Chilbolton Common in Hampshire on Wednesday mm-hmm. evening. I mean, why do we need the location of it? Are we going to go and visit the location of where the cow yeah, got his gonna, head stuck gonna, in the yeah, tree? Yeah, you're right. No, there's going to be a pilgrimage. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you this link in a minute so you can see the pictures as well. Um, the, fire fi- uh, the fire service was called out about 7.40pm and worked mm-hmm. with an animal rescue advisor to cut the tree and free the cow. But it took three hours. Oh, so the tree had to die. Oh, that's really yeah. sad. Poor they can't, one cannot live. Yeah. <laughs> one yeah. has to go. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't want the cow to die either, but, you know, still, it's, it's a bit sad. Mark Compton, Compton, um, who is the fire service's animal rescue tactical advisor, who you can't say that all in one go really, you know, really quick, um, said the animal rescue queue from Winchester worked to release the cow by enlarging the hole and manipulating the cow's head <laughs> until it was free from the tree. It sounds like it's given birth to the uh, from the tree, doesn't it? <laughs> it does a bit, yeah. Yeah. Seeing the punny side, the fire service God. said on Twitter, <laughs> the crew worked to remove the animal from the willow tree. 
<laughs> yes, you... Guy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I know, but I am quite enjoying going, moo. <laughs> so, you know, it's making me laugh. Uh, two photos of the animal were shared by the fire service and showed and and show front and rear views of the trapped cow. In one picture, the cow looked pretty disappointed with herself. Oh, <laughs> I think yeah, that's the end of the story. So, uh, so yeah. So if you're out there and you want to find the pictures of the um, of that, then if you just if you just type in utterly ridiculous, um, I'm sure that will come up. With uh, you know the cow who got her head stuck in the tree, and I think she might be pregnant as well. Going by the little bump that she's got, she's got quite a big bump. So, uh, but bless her little cotton socks, <laughs> she is proper stuck oh, in that tree. I found a, I found a picture. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's thing. funny, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Poor animal. Yeah, poor thing. <laughs> My guess is, I bet it was trying to scratch to get rid of an itch. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Or um, or there was like a leaf that they really mm. wanted to eat or something like that. But bless it. Oh, poor, poor, poor cow. But poor it's free cow. now. That's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so... At least the like you said, at least the cow is definitely free now. So that is mm -hmm. uh, that is amazing, amazing news. So it but, is. We yeah. ended on a positive. That's good. It did. Yeah. It went. Fu it started fun with uh, mm -hmm. Nigel stories. It went a bit bizarre in the middle, and then it ended with a good old chuckle at a cow it stuck did. in her head happy, in the tree. A happy ending. We oh. like happy endings. Oh, we do like a happy ending. James wink. <laughs> oh. Such filth. Finish. Sorry, sorry. I, I meant to say. I meant to say. Did I say wink? I meant to say. Ah, yeah. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> All right, we got mad. Yeah. What do you mean, God? We're already there. <laughs> yeah, I had. I had no marbles to begin with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the hippos ate all my marbles. <laughs> <laughs> right well james i think that is a fantastic way to end another week what do you think i would agree yes it certainly is yeah well in that case then i think that we've been talking enough cods wallet this week i have been Gemma. i've been james bye 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 everybody bye I always like to have the last word. <laughs> <laughs>